flat for this particular tune. This is Kelvin Boy with Down Flat. I wonder where he where is he? Jennifer. Wait, right? Wait. Right? Because I really did like his songs. Did you know the dance to it? I did for uh uh ah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> And let me say a warm welcome and good morning to my womanpreneur of the week, Jennifer Amako, Hi. is the CEO of Nice Interiors. I was trying to wrap my lips and everything around <laughs> the pronunciation of this because your this your nice dear. It's spelled I, I G N E I S S. Yes. For the purposes of branding, you know, does that help or hurt? Actually. It helps and it hurts it, mm. you know, because people don't get to, um, they don't know how to pronounce it and it brings a conversation for okay. us to talk about it, to let them know where the name came from and how it's an inspiration for me and the brand all together. Aha, uh -huh, I yeah. see. You know what I see other people sometimes do with these more complex names? Mm -hmm. They'll do, they'll provide some sort of, what do you call like a pronunciation yes. guide, yes, yes. if you will. I wanted to do that in my logo, but... I like the conversation it brings when okay. people look at the name. And they think, I've heard so many What are some of the variations? I've heard Guinness ah. before. <laughs> <laughs> As they try to end, wrap their minds around it. But right. again, a warm welcome. When I, you know, threw my net out, when I cast my net out for uh, Woman Preneurs, you weren't shy at all to take the bait and no. let me know what it is um, that you do. And I think as a business owner, you should always kind of be prepared right. for some of these uh, mm -hmm. opportunities. So do talk to us. What is nice interior? How did you get into it? And uh, how are things going at present? Um, so Nice Interiors is a passion, basically. Um, it's an interest for me. And it didn't just start from the interiors, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm a creative in general. So I do a lot of creating things from scratch. I and I started actually in fashion designing. And I went to fashion school. Are you wearing something from yes, your own? Dress. Actually, I made oh, my dress. Oh, <laughs> very beautiful. Thank you. Ah, if you're watching us on a Facebook <laughs> Live, and you yeah. should, you see this very colorful ensemble that Jennifer has got going on. So this is something that you, you yes. made. You started off with the, with the fashion. With the fashion. Yes. Has that always been the passion? Um, yes, actually, I'm very, I always say that I'm very blessed to have known what I've wanted to do since childhood mm. because I've, it, creativity has always come very easily for me. So when I started in fashion, love it, but I'm still in it, just that we've branched into so many aspects of it right now that I wanted something new. I wanted to spread my wings because I know there's more that I could do and I was doing more. So I decided to venture into interior designing because building houses and architecture has always been a passion, but I didn't get the chance to go to architectural school. Okay. So I did a lot of research, a lot. A lot of research. Yes. Sometimes having just the talent is not enough mm. because huh, it's easy. I can do these things, but you have to be able to prove not just with your words or um, with the things you do, but also have a certification behind it. So I had to do a lot of research. I had to take some small courses here and there. And yeah, we are here. But the 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 interior designing is a very exciting aspect for me that I want to do more in it. Mm. And I want to actually venture into interior architecture because it's a very broad so interior, field. So interior design is one thing and you have yeah. interior architecture. Yes, there's what so is many. That? So interior designing is basically just entering into a complete house, okay, finished already, and then you just put it together. Okay. The, the, the couches, the curtains, mm. you know, the styling okay. of the place. That is interior designing. And interior ar architecture is a bit more complicated. Mm. It, um, I would say interior design, uh, interior architectures and architect work hand in hand. Okay. A lot of people do not recognize interior architecture. But when you do go to a room, right, and you realize that, oh, this socket was supposed to be here, but now it's here. The TV station was supposed to be here, but now it's not where it's supposed to be. That is where interior architecture comes in. So they work hand in hand from scratch with the okay. architect, architect to actually figure out the, the settings of the place in the right way and also manage the space, actually. Mm. Yeah. Okay, some good context <laughs> there for us also. If somebody's listening to us uh, this morning and they have a keen eye, you know, some people are just naturally blessed with being able to exactly. enter a room and, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, know what should go here, what mm -hmm. color would suit the ambience and mm -hmm. whatever, the purpose of the room. What is that first step that they should take? Now, with the benefit of hindsight, if you could go back in mm -hmm. time, how would you actually 
actually launch this career and start on the best foot possible? To be very honest, there's so much I would change. Okay. I would take my time to mm. really understand. Because it's, it's a broad field. It's not just... Because once you enter, you realize that you become a project manager. Mm. Sometimes you even become a carpenter. You become a tiler, painter, everything. So you have to really take your time to really understand where exactly do I want to place myself in this field. That would give you a very strong standing position, you understand? Mm. So I would actually have taken much of my time because I felt like, oh, I can do it. And I've always been so confident in the things I can create. I just jumped into it. And even though it turned out well, I wouldn't have done that if I'm doing it all over again. Okay. So you take your time, figure out where you want to really specialize in, mm. research, especially if you do not have um, a certificate or a degree in it. You take your time to research. Right now, the internet has made available a lot of resources. That's right. You have to research. You have to... You know, when you talk the talk, you have to back it up with the things that you can really do. Because mm. sometimes just having the eye is not enough. Okay. Yeah. And if you are somebody that uh, maybe doesn't have the eye, mm -hmm. is it the kind of profession that you can develop an eye for? Or would you say your starting point is to have that creative bone? Honestly, yes. Okay. Because I've worked with developing companies that they, feel, they felt like, oh, we can do it. This is very easy, you know. But then it gets to that point where now they are lost because it can be really overwhelming. Right. It can. Even just choosing a particular kit, and it's not just about the color. The fabric is also very important. The types of um, pleats you want in the curtain, the design. The curtains have so many designs, you will be shocked. <laughs> right. So you enter, I mean, and I'm somebody that's grateful for the type of work you do. Mm -hmm. I, I consider myself quite creative, but when it right. comes to styling, if you leave me with an, a, you know, an, a room like this, I wouldn't know where right. to put what mm -hmm. and the different uh, intricacies that go along with it. And they say if you want something done, just yeah. have it done well. By a Get professional. By a professional. Yeah. So you say even to the extent that you're choosing the right fabric, mm -hmm. uh, it can even change the, the, the way right. the room is. These are things that must be taken into consideration. Yes, it has to be taken into consideration because even if you get to choose the right curtain, just the design of the curtain can throw everything off or mm. the fabric can throw everything off. So there's so many things to think about and consider before you choose all of these things that even come together. Even the painting, together, would you even come? Even Especially, especially the painting because of the i understand that even the way that you paint a room can yeah. change the vibe everything the lighting even where you place some sort of light can throw everything off because you can put a light in that corner it will not be useful you understand mm. so you have to just figure everything out on paper first and foremost so if you don't have that knowledge or basically organizational skills mm -hmm. and also um being able to um project management basically right so i found myself being a contractor every now and again to be very honest so you have to just place yourself in a position where you are ready to explore learn more and become more like improve okay mm -hmm. now let's talk about money luchi the money aspect of this jennifer <laughs> does this sort of job pay honestly it does it if does. it's consistent, to be uh -huh. very honest. Right. But every now and then you find yourself in a position where projects does not come as often. But thanks to God that when they do come, they oh, come you get well. good money. Oy. Oh, yes. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh -huh. And for me, not just interior design, because I don't do just interior design, and I work with um, development companies, and we build from scratch. I'm already practicing my interior architectural skills. Even though I don't have the certificate yet, I'm working as with mm. some um, development companies that trust in my talent. And so because of that, I'm able to acquire more and do more. So and do that you means have more a portfolio money. then? I, that's actually one of the things too that you have to you build have on. to do okay so portfolio. for our budding um interior designers in interior architectural styling mm -hmm. stylists designing um what should they be thinking about in terms of even landing that first gig right. what was that f like for you and how did you come by your first gig for me it was basically trust <laughs> somebody just somebody decided to trust you. me and trusted in my talent and uh, i'm very good with words so i was able to explain you wrap what them. 
to be very honest. <laughs> it's really good sometimes to be able to, because for me, you mentioned something earlier when we started that is good for a business person to put themselves out there. Yes. But me being a business person, I'm also a creative. Okay. And one thing I've realized about as creative, sometimes it's very hard for us to put ourselves out there. Mm. If you leave me, nobody will see my portfolio ever. To you be very keep honest. it to yourself as yes. opposed it's, to it's putting it out there. It's never reckoned. But mm. I've had to force myself over and over to put myself out there because it's very important and doing the portfolio is one of the best way to do that right it can be through instagram page and putting your work on there mm -hmm. you can also decide to create a website for yourself there's so many websites that actually allow you to just go and create a portfolio for yourself so you can do that and you can also just on your pen drive or something just gather a couple of your works something that is good you always have to find um attach a before and after because it gives people the magnitude of what you've been able to achieve with that space, you understand? Mm. So you have to think of everything. Sometimes it could be just the smallest thing you, th you think is not good enough to be on your portfolio. It is good enough. Okay. It really is. Mm. I'm certainly picking some, some, even some general business tips here yeah. um, from Jennifer. Time check. It is some 11 minutes to <laughs> the top of the hour. This is Woman Premier on 3FM Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. We're talking uh, women in business. And Jennifer says, if you uh, uh, want to get into this type of business, you have to also be confident, put your work out there, mm -hmm. and put uh, your work in a centralized location so that others can take a look. We'll go on a very, very quick break. When we come back, this very juicy conversation continues right here on 3FM Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. <laughs> Like how water refreshes you on a hot sunny day? A refreshing bath with a life soap leaves you feeling fresh and brimming with confidence. Available in lemon, coconut, rose, and aloe vera. A life soap. Feel fresh, feel alive. This advert is FDA approved. A life soap, a life soap, a life soap. Rise and shine, rise and shine. It's another day to stay on point. Toast is spread, it's still on point. Watch is spread, it's all day long. Still on point, yes, it's still on point. It's still on point. Watch is spread, it's still on point. For your bread, it's still on point. For your toast, it's still on point. It's yummy, delicious, it's still on point. Spread. Delicious, creamy, and always on point. This advert is FDA approved. Womenpreneur on Sunrise. And we are back. And this is Womanpreneur on 3FM Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. We're speaking with Jennifer Amwako, CEO of Nice Interiors. Also picking some general business tips as well for her. One thing that certainly um, stands out, Jennifer, I'll say, is the confidence, the passion, and the enthusiasm. And sometimes those are the sorts of things that actually even win you customers. Very necessary. Who doesn't want to interact with somebody yeah. who is quite lively, energetic, and seemingly passionate about what they do. What would you say is another, um, maybe another tip that is working for you in the field of, of business? Most importantly, what's really working for, I would say number one, it's finding your community, mm. to be very honest. Because um, my community is the companies that I work with, the big companies that sometimes bring some of the work to me, okay. the development companies that I work with. It's very important to have a couple of people who believe in you. Because for me, it's everything for me. Um, being a creative in this country comes with a lot of people not believing in you. That's people right. think you're wasting your time, to be mm. very honest. And most times it's even family. And that's has where... That, is, has, that, has that happened with you? I'm still proving myself, so it's... it's oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're still having to yeah. prove that you're not just doing something exactly. frivolous. And Every this is something day. that uh, Every day. Is, is paying bills. Yes, so you, you have to actually find that 
community that do believe in you because that is what will drive your passion and your confidence. Because if you don't have that, it gets a, it, with those moments when the jobs are not coming, that is what you need. You can have those people to talk to them. They can give you ideas. They can mm. give you jobs, you know, yeah. and it's really important because most of my jobs came from these communities and you have to also be loyal. You, it goes hand in hand. It's just okay. honor. You honor them and then they also help you. Right. So you have to have that community and you also have to show honor. Mm. Are you still pursuing the uh, fashion business, the clothing business? Yes. Or have, have you put that to the side? I, I'm not really that person to put something to a side. Okay. So I'm still doing it, but in a different... Right now, I'm sewing for schools. I do okay. school uniforms. I create them from scratch and sew in bulk. So it's usually for seasons when school reopens that okay. I have to do them. So it's not as always. So I have time for interior and I also paint, do sculptures. So I'm very... <laughs> so you're also painting. Painting, you're doing the sculpture. Yeah. I think you mentioned that um, this was before we actually came yeah. on air. That you, you is it is it wearable art? Wearable art. Talk right to us now, about that. What I'm doing is I call it merch way by nice, and I merch way merch merch way. way. Okay. Yeah. So I work with um, sustainable. Um, basically just sustainable um, fabrics, clothing, mm. things that I can um, recycle like jeans and I paint on it. So basically I put my art on clothing and sell and it's one in one. When I do it, I don't do it again. So it's okay. limited pieces always. So that, I do that. And also painting, which I love. I've been painting and doing sculpturing since I was a child, mm. but I never really thought to make it a business because it's something that I'm always very nervous to share for some reason. Right. But now for like the past three years since the COVID, I decided to share and indulge, indulge more into it. And I'm really loving it. That aspect is mm. very calm. And hopefully in the future, I get to exhibit and show the world that actually that aspect of me as well. So is that a part of, or, 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 of, of a, your life that you're able to monetize or not yet? Oh yes. I'm actually, I take, I started, um, I decided to actually make it a business because people were actually asking me to paint for them. I'm getting commissions for that. So yeah, I do sell it. Hey, Jennifer, <laughs> you're eating now. from here, eating from here, but I suppose in this economy it's good to kind multiple of multiple streams of income, streams of income. Very necessary very because but, the way my work is and with a lot of creators i'm sure they can attest to it it's not consistent especially yeah. in this country where people don't really appreciate it there are people who really do appreciate mm. art and all of these aspects of the things i do but it doesn't come as often, so and we if have I don't, to find don't, don't other blame ways. Us. You see, the disposable income is not there like that. So Ooh. whereas in other jurisdictions, you can appreciate art right, and spend right. a pretty penny to you. That's why you have to put yourself out there, not just put yourself in a corner. Yeah. Because even in these particular fields, if I'm to expand, there's so many more I can so do. So you say your customer interior. base is out there. Yeah. You'll find your customer yeah. base. Okay. O obviously, you will. If mm. you you wouldn't find your customer base, why would you even worry? But yeah. you would. Because even in Interior, when I'm not building or you know decorating places i'm selling some of the interior accessories that i diy myself like mirrors and wardrobes and sometimes even vases from the sculpting that i do so you always have to try to find other means to make money in whatever you do because even in i'm sure even what you do there's so many other things you can make on the side yes like but don't talk to my don't that. shout <laughs> man, because my boss is listening please this is the only thing i'm doing <laughs> time <laughs> take some four minutes to the top of the year uh, four minutes until we're bidding you farewell on three fm sunrise but jennifer just quickly on on the fashion side of things it, some might say that it's an oversaturated market uh, i know you are, you're doing something quite unique with the you know wearable if you mm -hmm. will painting on it how else do you differentiate yourself from the masses out there so that people um you know flock to to your particular business um to be honest it is getting oversaturated mm. but that does not mean that you shouldn't do it because there's always room for more but you need to find your niche you need to find what you're good in even if somebody's doing the same thing i think art does not come out the same from people mm. even with making clothes i can you can make this dress and it will not look it will the look same. completely so different you find something about it it can be your finishing it can mm -hmm. be um um your patterns the way you put the clothes together the way you advertise so i know some fashion designer that are making money just solely on your advertisements that's right because they're able to buy into people people's um idea of exclusivity so mm -hmm. you need to find that 
some very, very hot, hot tips and gems this morning <laughs> from Jennifer. We could go on and on and on and on, but we do have to wrap up this segment. Jennifer, what are you hoping for for your businesses as the year progresses? Um, I'm hoping for growth and recognition, more of it. I need the world to recognize what I bring to the table because it is a lot. And yeah, I could do more to put myself out there, so I'm also trying to meet halfway mm. so that I'm just hoping for more recognition and growth. Ah, Jennifer, yeah. with this type of passion, confidence and zeal, I don't see that being a problem for you <laughs> for the rest of 2024. Thank you so much for honoring this invitation and Thank coming with some me. very hot and serious gems for us this morning. We're mm. very, very grateful right. um, and we'll connect with you, I'm sure, in due course. I have to come and speak to you about this. You're lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. It will look uh, good on you, girl. I agree. Some heels, <laughs> some gold accessories. I'm with it. Would you venture into some uh, jewelry I, making? I do. I actually oh, do beading as well. So Jennifer, yeah. what do you do? <laughs> it's been a I pleasure. Just, no, this is on. On and on and on and on. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time thank this you. morning and for joining right. us here on Woman Premier. Thank you. Women Premier on Sunrise. 3FM.